right, so Costa Rica tour 2.5. This is the second stop. And I gotta say, when I pulled in here, I was like, Brandon, why are we just now coming to feature this spot? Um, the view here is unbelievable. The planting here is pretty unreal. The house is unreal, the ponds. Really cool spot, really cool feature. This is actually Juan Carlos, Brendan's partner with Natural Living Designs. Um, he is a Tico, he speaks perfect English, and you guys ready to check this place out? Because I can tell you right now, just looking at the house and the fish ponds and the food forest, it's pretty unbelievable. Let's go. Oh, the view here is terrible, huh? Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hi. This is uh, Juan Carlos, my very old friend and business partner at Natural Living Designs. Um, we bought our very first property about 17 years ago in Costa Rica from Juan Carlos's family. Mm -hmm. It was on the other ridge, closer to the ocean. We had a view of this neighborhood, and I was always asking Wonka, what's over there, man? It's all green and like lush. And he's like, oh yeah, that's when you bought the property from us, that's where my family bought our, our new property. I was like, take me over there. We came over, I bought my farm here in the neighborhood, my current farm, uh, that, you know, a month later. And um, Juan Carlos and I started working together from day one. We've worked together every day since yeah. the last 17 years. Yeah. We're now uh, full business partners at Natural Living Designs. Um, you know, Juan Carlos is the brains behind the operation. <laughs> Juan Carlos handles a lot of our um, construction project oversight, uh, a lot of design work. Um, he's self-taught in computer design. He does amazing work. And um, yeah, so we're here today at his personal homestead. He's got about five acres, give or take. Mm -hmm. A little more land up front where his, his dad lives, his family lives. Um, and yeah, we're gonna take you on a quick little tour around the place today. Yeah, everybody welcome. And you speak English unlike most I, uh, Costa Ricans. I, I, I think, I mean, I always, when people ask me, I say, oh, I, I, I try, I try, I try my <laughs> best. I mean, with everything I do, I always try my best, you know, so. And that's what I try to do, for, you know, we, we always try to do the best for our clients, you know, like always try to do our best. Awesome. We're perfection, perfectionists, so to speak. <laughs> a little type A, but yeah. But yeah, welcome everybody Pura vida. to my little paradise. All right, let's check this place out. Let's do it. This is the driveway coming in. Like we were talking about, uh, Juan Carlos's family lives out front. He's on the back part of the farm here. Um, you know, you'll see as we're coming in, they have uh, animal pastures on the right side of the road. Pretty decent views off to the back there, mountain views in the front. As you're driving in here, he's got uh, fish ponds. This is more of an ornamental fish pond with, with kois. You want to talk about how you, how, you, how you got into kois or? Well, I get into the kois like, I say like five years ago. I mean, I, I, I love, I love those fish. I mean, I love any kind of fish. I love really anything related with with the sound of water. So I always try to I try to create that because I don't know that for me is like, I don't know, it's something, something I can't really describe like the feeling for me. So, you know, for sure with water, fish. But you know, I started like five years ago with my, you know, my, my family have another another place up there. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And when we sold the property, so that's when we buy this one. Say, hey, I need to take everything I have up there and do the same thing here. But and nicer. <laughs> Yes, yes, definitely. Because this is the place, you know, I say, hey, this is the place I want to, where I want to build my house. Finally, finally, I have the, the way to build my house. Uh, that I have to say thank you to you because, you know, all the hard work we've been doing for 17 years, that's, that's the end, that's kind of like this is the, the end result here, yes, part of it. You, you know? so deserve it, brother. Um, but yeah, I love, I love fish. I mean, I like, I like to eat fish. That's the thing. I have tilapias, but I have, this is my, my pets. You see, I have a lot of dogs too. So I love animals too. That's the kind of things I have cows, baby cows. But this is my one of the, you know, my my favorite um uh how you call it, hobbies? Hobbies, yeah. Hobbies. And the, the and, and the koi is correct. This is like aesthetic. This is yes. for beauty. This isn't yes. you don't eat the koi necessarily. You don't eat a pet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> good answer, good answer. And then in that pond you actually have your production for food. For exactly. Your tilapia. Correct. Correct. Okay. And I already start, I can show you that guys later. Down there, I start a new one. Another pond. I, and I will explain you why why we decide to do that one. Because it's something really more related to my dad. Which is something important for him. And he told me about like the specific location. I say, okay, let's do a pond right here. 
because he feels that way. Okay, I want to so explain you about that. I want to hear that story. <laughs> yeah, this is my um, tilapia farm. So I always try to, you know, I, I try to remember like how long, but like always remember San Agustin with the first property you yeah, buy? when we first met. You know, that was one thing I pointed out to you on the first time. Oh, I love tilapias, I love fish, I love that. And so that's something I always, you know, if I if I can or if I, I can do for somebody, any I anybody recommend. Not just not just to have the tilapia, like to have a, a food source. It's, you know, I don't know, it's something related about the water for me in person, the water and the fish. The energy, yeah. Uh, it's, it's something it's, 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 it's feed me, feed me the feels make me feel good. I love it too. Yeah. And you know, aquaculture is so amazing because in the agricultural world, aquaculture fish systems is the highest you have the highest production of protein for the smallest amount of land and so as far as talking about regenerative uh, homesteads and personal homesteads they're really amazing systems because you can produce a lot of food with a small amount of resources in a small area you know and so it's it's an agricultural system that that's um, really worth um, creating on your landscape when you when you have the capability to do it we set up aquaculture systems for almost all of our clients. Um, you know, even our, we have a lot of clients that are they're vegetarian or vegan. They still like to have the like you know the energy of the ponds. Yes. It's, mm -hmm. it's just such a great energy to bring to the farm. Totally. So we'll have the aesthetic koi ponds. People that do eat fish like to have that as a food source, um, and we can do it either with a, a flowing water source, pretty much all the properties that we, we find and source for, for our projects and for clients mm -hmm. always have running water. You know, we don't buy properties without running water. That said, we have had clients that have hired us to put in fish pond systems that don't have running water. We can still do it with pump systems, aeration, yeah. things like that. And so it's something that really anybody can do. What, whatever your, your natural resources, you, you can actually, in a very small space, pretty low investment, yeah. But the return you're going to get over the lifetime of a food source, it's, it's you know, it's, it's really one of the, the, the as I say, the all-stars of regenerative um, systems, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Should we go, speaking of uh, food production, should we go check out your production gardens? Sure. Let's go this way. All right, let's All do right. it. And just something I want to point out, you'll see as we're walking through Juan Carlos's farm, you can tell that he has a love for the land, that he has a love for beauty. Oh. Everything is... Immaculate everything everywhere you look there's beauty, you know, he just flowers. It's 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 a true uh, perennial uh, Heaven here, you know, he's got perennial flowers, which of course attract the the pollinators and attract yes. all the beneficials um, He's got everywhere you look there's food inter interspersed with the ornamentals, you know, so it's it's really yeah, uh, I, try, I try always try to utilize the space the space and how have need to be used even for beauty or for you know production food or you know whatever right. you got i got papaya, papaya right here producing with with flowers yeah. i got like my my puppy is here <laughs> i got like i always like to have a uh, eucalyptus that stuff is really good to, on uh, you know no medicinal plants but yeah how big is the house that house i think is close to 180 square meters 2000 square feet 2000 yeah. square yeah. foot nice kind of like you know I think it's a simple style, but I've tried like, it's more like, for me, it's more like about like the functionals, like the space. I prefer to have space than something too complicated. You can see my house, the roof is a simple roof, really. But for me, it's, it's perfect. I, yeah. don't, I don't need more than that. No, it's beautiful. I, I prefer to have that. I prefer to have more space. I like to have like a big, like you see, I have a big um, outdoor area. Porch, yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, Favorite yeah. feature. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Definitely. That's our main focus on when building down here. We're ma our main focus is functionality, uh, functionality, passive cooling systems, you know, local materials that we can get in Costa Rica that are going to be resilient to the tropical climate. And you know, Juan Carlos's house is a really good example. His house is actually built out of uh, SIPS panels, yeah. uh, structurally integrated poly styrofoam system something like that mm -hmm. um, and it's basically styrofoam with for lack of a better word like kind of like thick chicken wire on both sides and then we blow what's kind of like um, it, it's a blown concrete you know mm -hmm. um, and so yeah it's, it's blown on the walls in the end if you knock on the walls they're super solid they feel yeah. like concrete block 
but it offers really good insulation, mm -hmm. um, good sound resistance, and yeah. Um, and th that's his main house. We're gonna take a tour around the edge to the production gardens, back into the food forest, and then we'll end up in what we might call one of the hearts of the farm, which is the outdoor kitchen. Yeah. And, and Juan Carlos is very into, you know, the, the traditional way of cooking here, which is with fire. Yeah. And so he's built this beautiful, amazing outdoor kitchen with all sorts of different cooking styles with wood, you know? So we'll mm -hmm. go check that out. It's pretty impressive. All right, Let's go see those food floors. Hey. I'm not going to be able to walk by these cars without giving them a little shout out like we have in the other videos. <laughs> Brendan, got the this diesel one, trailblazer one. with the snorkel. What? Can't find that in the States. And then check this Lander Cruiser out. What? Are you kidding me? Bro, I'm about to take one of these home. You, that should be in the, in the works for sure. <laughs> Another crazy diesel Colorado. Got the snorkel again. You know, we got the bananas over here. And you're not in Costa Rica without the motos. No. Look at these dogs. Coco, Lucy. What do you got, four? I got five. You got five? The whole team's not even here? Yeah, two, four, five. Oh, man. Between the dogs and the koi, we got it growing on. This is like a true zone one, immediate, you know, behind the house. He's got his bigger food forest off back on the, the back part of the property. But here he's got all the stuff that he's gonna use on a daily basis, right? So he's got, it's so amazing. You can, you can see how much love and care he gives these trees. Like he's got ground, these amazing ground covers around all these trees. I mean, this thing, like a couple year old grafted avocado dripping with avocados. Like, look at that mango. I mean, on this tiny little mango tree. Um, Obviously, you can see the aesthetic beauty that and, and care that he puts into design of all these different microsystems here. Well, let's give some mango love. Costa Rican mango. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Oh, we ain't playing. Yeah, so we got mints over here, different herbs, some Suriname cherry. These are uh, perennial peppers. This is uh, oregano. perennial oregano. Flowers. What do we got here on the ground? Mustard and radish. Mustard, radish. Oh, I got some. Um, this is the best. Try this. This is really sweet. The batangas? Yes. This one's super sweet. Pitanga, Suriname cherry. Ben, try that super out. Sweet, super sweet. Yeah. What is it? Mm. Suriname? Suriname cherry. Yeah, we call it pitanga here. Really sweet. Super good. Oh. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> it's really good though. Papaya. Yeah. Calamondine? Calamondine. This is a really yummy, super sour citrus. Tons of juice. Yeah. Great for making lemonade. Calamondine. Yeah. This stuff is good. Super good. It's sour, but with like a tiny bit of sweetness, right? But I like to eat it with the skin and everything. Uh huh. The skin gives you that little, like, a uh, like a sweet flavor. In yeah, they're, they're like kumquats. The skin's mm -hmm. actually edible and they, the skin is sweet. You know, the peel, yep. the peel is sweet. Yep. This is limon, mandarina, 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 acido, sour mandarin, lemon drop, mangosteen. With fruit. What's this? This is uh, garlic. Oh, the garlic plant? Garlic, garlic plant. plant. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. That's a garlic plant. Uh -oh. They grow like crazy, mm. super fast. It's oh like yeah, it's like, like vine. garlic, garlic vine, garlic yeah, vine. Garlic yeah. vine. I, I, okay, that's the name, right? Garlic vine. We've got some true regenerative uh, permaculture happening here, Pete. That's my like, wife. She loves to grow like her own stuff. I mean, she loves to grow like yucca, cilantro. She loves cilantro and everything, and she loves mustard and pepper and all that kind of stuff. So I, you know, when I when I do this whole area with all the trees and all the ornamental stuff. You know, I have these little sections in between so she can do that kind of stuff because she likes that kind of stuff. We got um, caviar, caviar, lime. Ooh, I have a one, I want, but they're full with caviar fruits. That. Manzana de agua. Manzana de agua, water apple. This. Lots of flowers everywhere. My first two um, anona. Anonas. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I, I like to put stuff around my fruit trees to protect the roots. Yeah, the gills. And they look super nice. The, the way you, yeah, the way you're doing your gilding is so beautiful. Look at this gild over here. We got eucalyptus, medicinal eucalyptus popping out the top. We got a, a slight understory of papaya growing out below that. Pollinator. Suriname cherry, mint, Apple. pollinator, uh, porterweed, butterfly bush, we call it down here. Oregano, like just like everything living and, and, and being in harmony together, you know? Just super, super cool. Yeah, I like, I like the mix, cool. I like the mix. I always try to, um, let me try to find the right way to say the right word, like imitate, like like make it, make it everything look like the, the natural creative stuff, everything grown like, more like feel like natural, looks like natural. So that's why I like to mix them up like that. So it looks like, oh, this is somehow, this is natural already here. Nice. Yeah, I like the, I, I like the mix. I love it. This little tree. Yeah, that's a. Oh yeah. It's cool. it's, it's, for yeah. some reason, it's the tree is small, but always put like big fruits. Oh, yes. you need a step of tata. Nice. Menta. Mint. These little bears. This right. is more for like birds. Ah, we yeah. feed them too. Okay. Oh yeah. Ah, you gotta see like around here. Like that's my my uh, my alarm in the morning, like 4:30. The birds like 4:30. I know they have like a um, nest where we call right there. And this one, like 4:30 in the morning, that's that way me wake me up in the morning because I have the birds always around me. <laughs> many, I think it's too many. Oh, wow. more uh, Costa Rican mulberries. Yeah, I prune all this. I prune everything oh. down almost. Here, look at this one. This um, Ooh. this last summer, everything you know. Is These are the goods, bro. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, you got one. Cheers. 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 Costa Rica, cheers. Cheers. Salud. 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 All right. Mulberry down. Here we go. Woo. I love it. Mm, mm, that's mm. Really good mm. That was legit. Yeah, that so was nice. very legit. Yeah. Right. A little groomy chama action. This stuff is really good to have. This good plant, pollinator. Always. You see little, like those little ones? The little bees. Always. And they always got flowers. Mm -hmm. And you know, they stay small, so to, to make path or whatever, put around trees to fit any space. This is perfect, this is great. This is him over here too, Brendan? Yeah, yeah, this is okay. his uh, his household production garden. Pineapple grove, nice. This is the, it's two years already. This is like, already you can see. Just a little Second harvest. Here. Yeah, but still, you, you, I still get lots of fruits. So for anyone that doesn't know how pineapples grow, um, you basically plant and then they'll they'll give you two harvests off of one plant mm -hmm. off of one start So what Juan Carlos is saying is this is the second year that these this this plant has produced And so he's saying the pineapples are a little bit smaller. They're generally smaller than the first year They usually produce a little faster than the first time. Yes um, And so then after this he'll clean these out potentially rotate them to a different area. Oh, yeah, and um, start with new new shoots and you know, a lot of people know the trick of cutting the top of the pineapple off and planting the pineapple mm -hmm. top, which totally works. It takes longer for the pineapple to produce based with if you're planting from the top. What we do is when you when the plants are getting mature, they put off little babies that we call ehos. And when you plant those ehos, that's what makes a really strong, mm -hmm. fresh pineapple plant. You get two harvests out of it. It reproduces a bunch of ehos. So it's pretty much a lifetime supply of pineapples oh, once yeah. you start your pineapples. Correct. This is not, oh, not, yeah. not, not a small. Yeah, no, that's really nice. That, that's something pineapple always mm -hmm. need to have. So you can see already my new, this is my new patch of pineapples. Okay, that's a Those new. Those already, already you can see a little fruits on it. Already. Okay. So now I am know like soon as this is done, I got to prepare another area for pineapples. And you got vetiver grass, rose all in here. So that's how I do this, uh, uh, the production area, like sections. And you know, to erosion control, so I always can rotate it, like I have a small areas. This is my new uh, sweet potato area right here. Okay, sweet potato, yes. camote we call it here in Costa Rica. Yes. That's your sugar cane back in that zone. Up there, yeah, go over there, yeah. So he's got a big patch of sugar cane. You'll see when we go to the outdoor kitchen that he's got a sugar cane processor and a way to cook down fresh, uh, what we call tapa dulce, or fresh uh, raw sugar. Mm -hmm. And do you use some of the vetiver for mulch sometimes on some yeah. of your things? Yeah, oh yeah, I like to do, you know, around my fruit trees. Uh huh. Anything when I do, you know, I cut all the, anything I cut around with the, with the grass, that's what I do around the trees. Okay. Yeah. So you can tell, if you can tell, you can see from the color and the size of the plant. 
This is the first harvest. Again. Coming on way stronger than these ovens, huh? Oh uh, yeah, those are already getting older. Oh, you know, that's that's the way. No yeah. roundup here, huh? Oh no, I don't like. We don't. We don't like that kind of stuff. You know, it's fine for the plants to be like that. What do you got? Peanut peanuts. In here? Regular peanuts. Yeah. Eating peanuts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I've started to. This is a new patch. I start this year. Here and here. You know, because you know my oh, wife. Peanuts. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we love. We love that kind of stuff. And you know, it doesn't take much space really. What's in the next one? Sweet potatoes again. Uh, I got yuca, cassava. cassava, and I got a little bit of corn. And you know, this is my new patch of cassava here. Okay. That's the old one already, already ready to harvest it. Nice. Yes. Hey guys, so I'm sorry I gotta I gotta uh, head out. Um, we're actually holding a ecstatic dance and dinner party for Pete tonight, which he'll be on his way soon after he's done with the video. But I'm gonna head over there and get everything ready. Um, great to see you guys. You'll be in good hands with Juan Carlos to finish the tour. And I will see you all again very soon. Pound dirt. What? You're lucky. You're lucky with this one. This is gonna be for you. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at this. She ready? It's ready. Oh. Totally, totally oh. ready. Ben, what do you think about this? I think we are gonna eat this. Compared to the one from last night? Let's see. Came from mm, here too. Very oh, good. Man. Yeah. Real deal. We just got lucky. Well, this is my um, food forest area. Pretty new. Been here for about three years. So I have my definitely something you always need bananas. You never have enough bananas. Um, I have some stuff already producing. Some stuff is pretty new. We got avocados you know. in between here, nice. Yeah, because you know, with some stuff, you know, you have to observe, you know, how, how everything works. Sometimes stuff not doing really well. And you know, you have to like change it or, or do something different, you know. That's how, that's how we do it, you know. So our avocado is gonna make the cut here? Yeah. Okay. More more berries. Because more, we more, more berries, berries. loaded with fruit, man. Sure. Move in. Wow, Look at that one. Loaded. What kind of variety is that? You know, what do you guys call it here? The, the mulberry? Yeah. Well, um, you know, we call it Morberry. Here we call it Morelia. In Costa Rica, we call it Morelia. Or, or Mora de Palo. But, you know, Morberries. Um, you know, this is brand new Bravo. stuff. Durian, I have a durian here. Oh. A friend of mine, you know, he got like a really good variety. high variety. Oh. And he gave me this one. So, I always, when I find something different, yeah. I always trying to find a space. Right now, I know I'm getting too tight, I think, with the space. So I don't think I can really feed any other trees. But you know, I try to use all the space I have. You better watch your head. Oh yeah, look at this. Crack City, Widowmaker. Do you plant the bananas first? Yes. Well, banana grows really fast. Really, you know, banana, you, you, you plant a banana and like, you can count almost like a year, let's say year and a half, you're gonna have fruits. So, and they grow really fast, you know. Oh, this one's got some fruits on it. Yeah, this is the capybara. We call it the capybara. I don't know if you guys have it before. Yeah, I believe so, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to make a cut and make another video with this one. Whoa. Look at this. Let me try to open it out. Oh, the lemon caviar? Oh, wow. Yeah. It's good? Oh, yeah. Well, back here, because I got a little bit more, you know, I have a creek, that's the border of my property. So it's more, a little more shade here, more bigger trees, natural stuff. So that's where I have more stuff that I like um, shade, like cacaos. This is my cacao patch, close to, you know, the creek, close more to the shade, mango things, mango stands. And, you know, you can really miss that. Look at oh, how many fruits I have. Jackfruit. This one. Nice. That's three years old, look at how many fruits that one has. Wow. Let's go there, let me show you that one. Good idea. You got one that's ready? I hope so. Uh, I mean, I'll be waiting. This one's getting getting close to be ready. But look at this. Oh. And this is only three years old. Nice. God. Big fruits. Uh, big, big, nice fruits. I don't smell any ripe ones there. No, here, no. Though. But this one, I think, is the one that's going to be the first one. I can... And that'll be your first one off the tree? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, like having a baby. Yeah, wow. right there. That's exciting. Right there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I be you know taking care of really this tree, like pruning. You can see I can prune the tops. Nice. Because they grow really fast. Yeah. So you want to kind of like take that energy, slow down that energy, and more put that to the fruits, you know. Definitely in Costa Rica, anywhere, I mean, almost anywhere you go, like any property, always this kind of stuff. Lots of citrus, huh? I don't think nobody, I don't see anybody who don't like this kind of stuff. You know, to put in your food, to put in your salad, to make drinks. In Costa Rica, we love to make drinks. We know with the, with the cane sugar, mm. or oh, take a cane sugar juice and add a little bit of this, that's the best drink you ever have. Well, I see ripe nanners out here. Everywhere. Whoa. We can't even keep up. This place is pumping. That one's getting ripe right yeah. here. It's ready. The animals are finding it. Oh, yeah. That's why I got a lot of birds going around. You know, just pick it from the plant. And these bananas. Good bananas. Ben, you want to try it? Yeah, let's see it. Give it to us, Ben. All right. Want the full-on flavor profile, Ben. Flavor profile. Hints of? Hints of banana. Oh, that's lame. Tastes hmm. like a banana. Let's see what else. <laughs> oh, it's very good. Salud. Salud. You know what variety it is? Um, I always get confused with the name. I have two different ones. Mm -hmm. I got two different types. So I can't, I don't want to say the name of this one because I, w I know I is got- Is this from Brendan's? Yes. The Gross Michelle. Okay. Gross Michelle. Yes. So you have plantains and Gross Michelle? Yes. Nice. Correct. Nice. This so is this, like but the now it's kind of like a little bit Rica. mixed because I like to mix the stuff. Nice. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure What about are you doing this. here with the trenches? Well, right now I will show you my new fish pond. Oh. So what I do with all the waterfall, the water um, overflow, I'm sorry, I have the ponds. So I create a contour ditch around, you know, and through the food forest. So the water is going to move really slow and go back to the creek mm. so always like for this plant like really close to the ditch in the summertime you know they, they get they get they get access to water yeah, yeah. How do you any crown or anytime I, I pull like like pineapple like down i always save the, cr the, the crowns yeah. and i always find a way to put it somewhere else so you see the size of this one because it's the first harvest this is a really good size pineapple good color too. yeah you know so you know still between the food forest you still have space i mean i know eventually i'm not gonna have the space because the trees get big you know they put more shade but right now i still have a lot of space between trees i can i can do a lot of stuff nice what do you got here this is a um a butte a butte yeah, a butte. Nice. yeah this is a pretty new tree but that one already got that one already got fruits the other older abu yeah this one not older same age but this one Oh, this one's just happier. I guess so. Well, you can see. I don't know if it's the fact that's what the old. This is the older ditch? The older ditch, because now I have a new pond and it's really close. Oh. That maybe that's what happened. Ooh, this right plant, right place. Wow. That looks good. You want to try? I would like to try. I mean, you want to try, senors? Oh, I'll try. Let's see here. Wow, it's good. That's really good. So that's making me believe. That's why I want to keep that trench there because you mm. can see this one compared to that one. This one already have fruits. It likes the water more. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is better than the one we had this morning, Ben. Oh yeah, way better. Yeah, this stuff's good. Yeah, I got more mangoes here. You know, they only like some. The areas like three years. Some is like two and a half, two years. So mm -hmm. this was pretty small. Already got flowers. Yeah. What is this masterpiece? This oh, is my wow. new. Uh, remember, I told you in the beginning. Yeah. What kind of pets you putting in here? More fish. What kind? Tilapias. Okay. More tilapias. That's I, it. I think. But you know, I ended up building this one because the rock. It was here. That was here. It's kind of interesting rock. You can see all these things here. Carvings. I don't know how to call it. Um, but my dad, his, my grandfather, his dad, he, he died uh, last year. He was 106 years old. Wow. And he was like half uh, indigenous. And he like, he always was kind of like really into this kind of stuff, like fine, like this kind of stuff.
So my dad kind of like believes is like a really good energy around this rack. So I say, okay, if you if you really feel that way, you really think that, hey, and I love fish, I love ponds. Let's build this one around it. Nice. So it's not finished. It's not finished, but you know we work. We're working, we're working here on it. We're getting hooked up. We're working on it. Yeah. And a so, sunning spot up on top. Look at that. It's got two perfect seats that you can be sitting there. I mean, you need yeah. to put a boulder first. The overflow from the last one is right here. So. Yeah. Boom. Okay, everybody, welcome to my outdoor processing kitchen. Really, this is what I have here. That's where we have our little party sometimes. That's where we're processing our food, you know. And that's where we, you know, I just finished my, um, my that was my kind of like priority at some point project. You know, my outdoor kitchen where we have the oven, a smoker, a stove, everything, you know, with wood. We like that, you know, food, it's no food, it's no flavor better than that. So right now we have a little party, let's call it going on here. I got a bunch of friends here. Yes. Hola, hola. 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 That's a bunch of friends, so let's come around here. Just a quick um, tour from my other kitchen. This is where we're processing our cane sugar use to create what we call tapa dulce. Oh, brown sugar, you know what, you know, that's another name we use it. That's where we cook our bread, where we do bread. This is my barbecue. Things hot, huh? Yeah. Ooh. Right now, yeah, we've been using it. You guys use this thing, huh? Oh, yeah. Try, we try to use it most of the time. You know, stuff, wood stuff, and, you know. That's my a wood stove. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You know, it's right here. Let me open it up. This, this, you know, where we fit, you know, all the wood. This is for that smoker when I used to smoke her. And a big outdoor sink because my wife, you know, we all, we always grow like a lot of stuff outside, which get really dirty. So to clean it up, like the sweet potato, the cassava, so good to have a big space to clean it up, you know. Yeah, this friend of mine, really good friend of mine, Anthony, uh, he gave me this. He brought it from the United States. Was a manual thing to uh, a juice extractor, but now you know I have all this structure and I, I like this engine, electric engine, so that make my job much easier when I you know when I do the juice, you know. Nice. So yeah, so you can see this is kind of like a little hanging place, you know, outdoor kitchen, outdoor parties, whatever you want to call it. So you know we have a bunch of friends. So we, all the fun we, stuff happens. Are upside here, yeah. So three years. Yeah. Now you're just over a hectare? Yes. Uh, you know, the whole the whole farm we have here is like five acres. You know, where we have the cow, we got everything. But the area where I really do my stuff, my the stuff I like, is like two acres really. Wow. Really. So because I like I like you see around my house I like to have like nice big open area where my kid can play. We always he always have a bunch of friends coming over. We like to play, so you know, you have a space to do it. Impressive work, man. Thank you for the tour. Oh, thank you guys. You guys are killing it here. <laughs> thank you. Hey, Juan. Yes. <laughs> Why move to Costa Rica? <laughs> <laughs> well, I moved to Costa Rica, I think because my parents, they met here. So I, I, I born here in Costa Rica 44 years ago. And I love this country. And, you know, anybody who came here, they love it. You know, everybody. I got a bunch of friends, a lot of friends, really good friends from the United States. And they really like it here. And you know, there's many, many, many reasons, many, many reasons. But you know, I think you can create, everybody called Costa Rica is like a paradise, but you can create your own paradise anywhere, you know, anywhere you go. All right, so. So other thing for you. Yes. I notice, you know, Costa Rica is not perfect, just like all these other places around the world. There's a sure. lot of chemical ag. Sure. How did you get into organic? How are you not the typical, you know, herbicide, chemical fertilizers, you know, why grow organically? Well, I think because, you know, I grew up, uh, when I was a kid, you know, I grew up watching my, my grandfathers, the way they used to do stuff, before all this, all this nasty stuff came. And they was doing really good. They was healthy, they, they was producing a lot of stuff. And as soon as they start using this new technology, somehow they call it, everything started getting worse and worse and worse. And the good thing, everybody, lots of people, I'm not saying everybody, but like lots of people, they realize about that. I mean, I can't blame nobody because they don't know. You know, they, lots of people, I use it before. I use it, I didn't know. Yeah, same boat. You know, but I think if you, when you find out about something, 
and something bad like that and you know try to do your best to, to change it change it for you change it for your family change it for for your community for your country do the best you can awesome work man be the change you want to see all right down dirt one all right